<clears throat> hello, hello. I don't know why she said goodbye when I say hello. Good evening, teacher. I will be listener. I am sick. I have flu. Got it. Who's Frank? I know who's Frank. This is Robinson. Jesus loves you more than you should know. Hey. Hello. Hello. You are not alone. I am here with you. Don't fall apart. Always in my heart. <laughs> okay, so last night, hello. <laughs> Hello, hello. You may start the class. Remember, if I'm not talking, you can start the class by saying hello to a classmate. Hello. <laughs> Come on. Jolman, Lucy, Erika, Adriana. I know Nelson is sick. I mean, everybody's getting sick. I'm in a meeting. The Hello, teacher. It's going to be as a listener. Oh, come on. Oh, the first hour. Okay, the first hour. I'm going to be. Okay. Oh, come on. <clears throat> Zoom is giving me an error. Okay. I'm going to have to do something later. Okay, so good night, everybody. Please turn on your camera. Let's participate on the class. Tonight is Tuesday, September 19th, and this is our class number 14. 14, tomorrow is our class number 15th. And I will be on disability since Thursday. So, so sorry. Someone else will be with you for the last two weeks. But don't worry, I'm here with you tonight. So let's, I know, I'm having that little surgery on my hand and I won't be able to be with you. I'm so sorry. It's the first time in 10 years that I go on disability, you know. <coughs> never, I never miss a class. And I have only been late to one class in my whole life. And that was on January, what, January 2nd, 2017. <laughs> An unforgettable moment. That group was always late, you know. I, I, I was always on time, and that group of people was always late. It was an intermediate class, intermediate four. And the day was January the 2nd, and I never forget it because... I was late, what, like 10 minutes, 10 minutes late to a class. And they were all there. That day, everybody <laughs> was present on time. And I was, oh, my God. Just can't believe it. January the 2nd. But they were still smelling like alcohol. That's the funny thing. <laughs> Anyways, wah, 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 wah. So today we're going to have to talk about assigning a basic needs assessment. Oh, really? Come on. 
Mariana, how's your day? How was your day today? Tell me. But I I asked for a free day today. <gasps> Look at you. And they said yes? Yes. We have a like a, um a benefit in, in my company. Uh, we have like unlimited free days. So that's 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 <laughs> So what? if you want uh, to take a, a day up, you can. <laughs> Where do you work? Um, <laughs> the name? What? The name? Yeah, what's the name of your company? Uh, if I can. It's the Interweb. Conde. <laughs> With the... Okay. Yeah. I, I I thought you were working for... um. A recruitment company, something like that, remember? And um, it's a market agents marketing agency. <laughs> the interweb. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> so that means that you are pretty because marketing companies only hire beautiful people. Maybe no. Nah, it's <laughs> true. It's true. Yes. In my case, I don't have to be like in front of the of the customers or something like that. So I am like back like back office. In the back mm -hmm. office, okay. So but I But still, I mean you're young, you have a lot of future, you know. They always hire people like that on marketing on marketing agencies. Mm, yes. I know, I know because I have had many students that worked for marketing agencies and and many of them have said, you know, I'm getting older, like people, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about people from 30 and on, you know, above 30 years old and they go like, I'm getting old and they're going to fire me. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why? Because I'm getting older. <laughs> uh, but... I think that in my case, or oh, well, in the case of my company, for them is more important about the experience or Your the abilities. knowledge. Yes, mm. because it's not something like um, like um, superficial. Um, superficial. Superficial for, or, or work. Mm. Mm. You know, it's just why. Why do you think they hire? Why do you think that this this happens? You know, of a typical thing is that you only see young, uh, beautiful women and handsome men working for marketing agencies. What's the deal? What's the deal? Um, maybe well, in marketing we have a, a two concepts. Um, they we have the inbound and outbound marketing. Mm -hmm. Inbound marketing. Is when you have you try to attract the the your clients, but when you when you are working in an album mar in an album uh, marketing, uh, you want to try to uh, put in all uh, the way as possible um, publicidad. How do you say publicidad? Marketing. Publicity. Mm, marketing. Um, it, but when you pay for, uh, for ads or the ads. Ads, ads. Yes, you're right. When you want to pay for ads, is album because you are not asking for, a uh, or maybe you are not searching for ex for something, and you. Uh, suddenly watch uh, an ad and they this album marketing is mm -hmm. more uh, invasive invasive uh -huh. invasive and the inbound marketing is more mm, light light, light. And, so it is lighter uh, lighter it's lighter yes okay it's lighter because uh, it try to it's try it to, tries it tries, <laughs> it tries <laughs> to 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 attract a uh, with a important con con just con content? important 
important content ah, okay, okay important content like blogs or things like that so when you are working in a album marketing is very important yeah, your how you look because you they record um videos um take photo, photos for the for ads so i think that is the is the reason so it's more it's more superficial excellent okay thank you for sharing adriana okay <laughs> Okay, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Hmm. well, we will talk about some topics tonight, but mainly we have to talk design, design a basic needs assessment instrument, and we will do it together, don't worry. So, Adriana Jose Serna Duran. Present. Daniel Antonio Luna. Daniel is not here tonight. Erika Jasmine Martinez Carpio. She's in a meeting. Okay. Fatima Denise Aguilar Marquez. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present. Thank you. Ivan Petrovic Guzman Aquino here today. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Jolman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Thank you. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. I here. Thank you. Nelson Antonio Rodas Rosales. Present. Thank you, Nelson. Ruth Isela Joaquín Flores. Present. Thank you. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Be careful if you're driving, please. Don't worry. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Okay, Vanessa is not here. Okay, so tonight we have to design a basic needs assessment instrument. Um, we have talked about this a lot, about how to identify training needs you did a presentation i think yesterday yesterday you made a presentation um that the um identifying uh, training options for different jobs right that's what you did yesterday so tonight we're supposed to build a basic needs assessment instrument but first first i will like to have you practicing something that you may have forgotten. So I'll send you uh, a video and you will practice for a few minutes, just 10 minutes maybe, and you come back, okay? These are questions with present perfect. Do you remember the present perfect? Let's look at an example with the only student with the camera on, okay? So Adriana, Never have I ever eaten food from someone else's plate, from someone else's plate, when they were not looking. It's this a is a, it's a game. So you can say, no, I haven't, or yes, I have. If you say, yes, I have, then you have to explain a little bit, okay? Never have I ever eaten from someone else's plate when they were not looking. I have never. <laughs> I have nev never. I've no. never. I've never. I've never. Okay. Really? Uh, You've never? Come on. No. <laughs> so you don't have brothers or sisters? Yes, but I, but I have respect for the for her. Uh, for their food? <laughs> for her food. <laughs> but have you ever thrown something on their food? As a joke or something? No, no. she 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 actually just <laughs> is she is she older than you? 
Yes, I am. The... Oh, you're the, <laughs> you're the youngest. Yes. Is it and and is a sister? How many, how many siblings do you? How many siblings do you have? Just one, a sister. Just a, a Just good one. job. <laughs> you know you know what siblings, right? Yes. Okay. Like hermanos. Yeah, in general. Thank you. Beautiful mm. Spanish. Yeah, sisters and brothers. <laughs> <laughs> all together okay so i'll send you this link i i expect you to practice i will just split the class in two groups just two groups so you can practice all together and say yes i have no i haven't there you have the video don't share it okay just ask the questions and look for new vocabulary there's a lot of vocabulary on this presentation Let's go. Gilman, Hector, let's go. <clears throat> Hector, Gilman, let's join. <clears throat> Okay. Wow. Hey, Hold, on. <laughs> Hold on. Just 15 seconds, 10 seconds, give me a minute. Oh my God, we were reduced. We are seven now. What happened here?
Okay, well, all of you are busy. Only Adriana is here, basically. Um, so I'm going to move on. And gentlemen, okay. I'm going to move on with tonight's class because there's a lot to cover, actually. And in the end, you are supposed to create a, a tool that will enhance your capacity of creating a a needs assessment uh, instrument. So let's work on this. I'll be brief or extensive. Let's see. Let's see. So what are we talking about tonight? Uh, needs assessment. But to make it a little bit more entertaining, uh, let's talk about weird jobs. What do you understand by weird jobs? I don't, I don't, I don't know that word. That weird. word? Weird? Okay. Weird, strange, rare. These are synonyms, by the way. Yeah. Strange. Rare. Rare. Rare jobs, strange jobs. Unwanted, unwanted jobs. Um, mm. not like a, but not it's like an informal. No. No, weird. Well, no, 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 no. Weird is not an informal word. Um, it's like not common. Not a common job. An undesirable job, for example being a grave digger being a grave digger that's would you like to work as a grave digger gentleman ivan no i don't no i don't know that 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 no, meaning. No. okay don't worry i'm not just in spanish gentlemen when you die when somebody dies what do you do when somebody passes away? Pass in heaven or pass in the hell? <laughs> no, yeah, it pass away, it passes away, right? So, <laughs> what, what do you do with the body? What do you do with um, the body? Uh, think. Mm. Uh, reflection. What again? <laughs> I don't remember how can I say reflection. You reflect, yeah, but in physical, what do you do with the body? The body. Ah, uh, create, uh, create, think, uh, enterrador. Thank you. That's right. Grave digger. Um, I as como les he enseñado, hay una palabra compuesta. Grave, tumba. Okay. Dig, d i g. Okay. Escarbar, ok. Entonces, digger, esto agrega el noun, crea una profesión prácticamente como drive, driver, ok, etc. Grave digger, exactly. Um, so, when somebody passes away, you make a burial. You make a burial. Burial. Yep. Entierro, right? A burial. Um, how, how do you say that in Spanish? Uh, oh my God! Are you, yeah, you have a burial, but you know, for some days, you do. Oh my God! La vela. How you? There's another way. A funeral. Okay, a funeral. That's another yeah. way of saying. It. So a funeral is conducted, right? A funeral is conducted and then you have the burial, which is taking the body to the graveyard, right? Anyways, so a grave digger, would you like to work as a grave digger? No. Or even worse, a grave cleaner? Grave cleaner. No. It's similar, right? You have to clean chapel, all right? How do you say chapodar in English? 
okay? To trim, mm. trim. Mm. Mm. You can trim your hair, you can trim your hair, you can trim bushes, you can trim trees, okay? Good. So weird jobs. What other jobs come to your mind? Mm. Uh, the the people the 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 uh, como se dice los que andan viendo los 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 que aquí aquí hay una hay una hay una hay un job relacionado pero es bien escaso son de los que andan como sumando cuerpos ahí que encuentran los muertos oh that's that's uh... I no no I don't don't I I don't a forens that's a forens For, foren uh, forense right forense ah uh, yeah yeah forens forens Maybe a exterminator of rats or flags. Okay, that's another one, an exter exterminator. Okay, a box killer, box exterminator, okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Mm -hmm. Any other job did you know? No, okay. Good, let's keep going. So training needs on weird jobs. Uh, and again, this is just uh, to give you an idea of the topic, right? Why do they need training needs? I mean, why do they need um, assessment, needs assessment, basically? As we spoke before, uh, there are steps that we need to follow. The main step first is research and analysis, truly investigate the different weird jobs to determine their specific training requirements. So as a grave digger, for example, what kind of training that person needs, right? Skill, skills and knowledge, identify the precise skills and knowledge that are essential for success in these unconventional roles. This is an unconventional role, right? It needs to be strong, of course. There are tailored programs. We spoke about this before. Uh, you can create customized training programs to address the unique needs of each weird job, uh, but in essence, all trainings are very similar and the tasks to perform, you know, the job that you're going to do may be something simple, but you need to go through the story of the company first, um, depending on what job uh, position you're training. Okay, but something very important is to use materials to use effective materials um, and resources resources nowadays you have a projector you have the internet you have a laptop speakers you can have other toys and in the training room okay all of this is meant for you to design uh, engaging learning um, and learning activities i mean in the end all of these materials can be utilized to to make the class more dynamic okay there are different things to consider okay um delivery strategies we talked about them before effective strategies for delivering the training content and captivate and inspire trainees that's the whole goal for you to keep them engaged we talked about that the whole purpose again is engagement and participation, promote active engagement and participation on trainees throughout the training process. Um, 
I have tried to do it. Yes, to keep you engaged in the class. And always with interactive activities. Um, simulations of the job and to enhance the learning experience. In this case, you know, it's, it's in picture it. I mean, you have a grave digger. A way to practice will be showing him how to use the shovel. You know, it's a shovel, right? Napala, a shovel. Okay. There are ways to use the tools, right? I didn't know that. I remember the first time I tried to use a shovel. Oh my God, I was a fail. It's not easy to use a shovel if you don't know. You have to put your foot on top of the shovel and push inside the earth and then strongly lift it, okay? If you're moving, whatever you're moving, if it is sand or just um, grave or earth, whatever it is, soil, you need to be strong. As we said before, we always have to evaluate the impact of whatever we're doing and how it was, you know, what, what was the, re the response of the trainees um, create a feedback collection is always good. Listen to the trainees, tell you, okay, I like this, I didn't like this. And this is the key point of tonight's topic. Continuous improvement, make evidence-based um, improvements to training programs to ensure their ongoing effectiveness. Always keep checking if what you did was good. And this is part of the importance of continuous training as the first topic we saw in the book, okay, uh, continuous development. And that's basically it on, on regarding trainings, what you're supposed to do. Now I have something here. Give me just a minute. What is a needs assessment uh, tool? Every time you deliver any course, or you participate on a course, most likely you find a survey. They deliver a survey and you have to answer this survey, right? I'm pretty sure you are aware of that. So just to give you an idea, sorry, give me just a minute. Just to give you an idea of how a needs assessment instrument looks like, let's look at the following little chart. So it's like if you were to evaluate, evaluate right now the class, which you will do, right? At the end of this module, you will be required to evaluate my performance and the whole class. Did you like it? Did you uh, feel fine? Look at these questions. Or oh, well, to evaluate your level of satisfaction in this needs assessment instrument. I like to practice the sounds and pronunciation regarding the English uh, course. Okay. Now there's a scale. The scale may vary. Just the way you learned when you were in school, right? The scale may, may vary. You may use numbers. You may use words like, um, what, average, poor, high, I don't know, multiple uh, things that you could say about the training, if it was good, if it was bad, if you didn't like it, if you liked it, etc. But always in a scale. Okay, what else could you use instead of numbers or letters? Can somebody tell me what else could you use on a scale on this type of charts? Instead of numbers, what could you use? Like words like excellent, good, Bad. Average. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other than words and numbers, what else can you use?
With numbers, say teacher. Numbers? Yeah, no, but no numbers, no letters. Oh. Oh, no words. What else can you use? Emojis. <laughs> uh -huh. Emojis. Emojis, right? Oh, or maybe a check and, and is this good or one check or I don't know, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> the poker face. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just didn't like it. I mean, it's like, yeah, whatever, right? Average. That's the meaning of the poker face and the emojis, basically, in a, in a in a survey, right? Okay. Now, what's the best option? What will you use? Would you use numbers, letters, words, you know, or, or emojis? Or percentages? Uh, uh, in in the company we was uh, we were we we were uh, we were uh, um, we were giving mm -hmm. uh, many tra many trainings mm -hmm. and uh, we use uh, that say Adriana excellent good. Bad. Just words, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that works a lot. Uh, for me, numbers are better because you 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 can summarize, and that's important. The data collection, when you do a needs assessment instrument, the, your your final goal uh, is to add on the results. You know, to summarize the results. To have an idea and what's the whole purpose of, of this instrument uh, well firstly is data is just data that you can summarize and and get an idea on each on each field which is important on each area that you're evaluating look at the answers i like to practice the sounds and pronunciation on the english course this is an english course and you could say yeah yeah, okay, it's a three, okay. Good. I'd like the teacher to tell me all my mistakes. Four, good. In class, I like to learn by conversations, okay. What What would it be, three? No, you don't like talking, right? So, nah, it's, that's a one. Okay, i like the teacher to explain everything to us. Four, <laughs> right. I like to learn many new words. Four, okay. As simple as that. Now you can add three plus what was it? Four, and that's seven, and plus one, eight, okay, and eight, 16 points out of a total of 20. Okay, and then you can do the math, right? That's the idea. On, I'll send you this image in just a minute. So on your book, let me see if I found find it. Where's the book? Oh. Here it is. Why is it not? Oh, I see why. That is because. Okay, there it is. Okay, so on your book, on page 20, we have this topic. We have a pair of work to design a basic needs assessment instrument. Give me just a minute. A questionnaire, a chart or questions to guide a needs assessment analysis session to identify the specific training personal needs in your department. So administer this instrument to at least, I don't like that word, <laughs> deliver this instrument to at least five of your coworkers. Process the information collected with the instrument and identify the top three training needs identified by your coworkers. Okay, look at the different fields of this needs assessment instrument. The tasks that you are expected to perform in your position. Second uh, field, list the skills you like to hone to improve. List the training options. Is it virtual? Is it a live class? What What is it? Okay. Number three, 
or the bottom left hand corner of the chart, list the current skills you have that allow you to perform the tasks that your position demands. And finally, number four, how will you perform? I'm sorry, how will your performance improve after the training? How will you optimize performance? Uh, will benefit the organization. So the main purpose of a train uh, of a needs assessment instrument is to bring results. So moving on. Let me give you an example. Let's go with site based needs assessment, okay, or to identify the specific training personal needs in your department. Okay. My position in the call center, I'm typing all day. Um but, well, that's the problem, but my position, I'm, I'm typing, I'm reviewing documents to report fraud registration, you know, identity theft from prepaid cards. That's basically my job. So the tasks that I'm expected to perform in this position, I'm on back office, that's the position, I'm sorry, back office. So I'm expected to type fast to read fast, I'm expected to um, know English, of course, <laughs> because all the documents are in English, uh, sometimes in French, sometimes in Chinese, and so on, right? So I have to go use the translator really fast uh, to understand Chinese or French or German, whatever language it is. Okay, these are the skills that I will, the skills that I would like to hone, okay, are mm, typing without looking at the keyboard. Can you type without watching your keyboard while you type, Arena? Yes. Yes? Oh, my respect. Oh my God. Joelman, can you <laughs> use the keyboard? Can you use the keyboard without looking at the keys? Can you use this thing uh, without, you know, this thing, can you use it without looking at it when you're typing? <clears throat> I, I hardly, hardly never use a keyboard. Yes. Okay. So no, uh, Hector, do you, Type without looking at your fingers or keys. Without fingers, type. Yeah, type on the keyboard. Uh -huh. Do you look at your fingers when you're typing or the keys? You know, do you look for the keys or do you just type? No, no I try not not see because when when was uh, I'll say uh, um, high school when you were in high school. In the high school, I have, I, I get uh, study, uh, mechanography. <laughs> you have typing, my, typing classes. My, teach, my teacher very, very, very strict for teach, effective for teach. No, I can, I, I never, but sometimes I necessarily see that we can uh, give the, the screen. Mm -hmm. When I type, excellent, no. excellent. Okay, you know what? I did this the, on the other way around. So first, these are the tasks that I'm expected to perform in my position. I already described them, but then the list uh, list the current skills you have that allow you to perform the task that your position demands. What skills do I have? I speak English. I can read fast. Yes. Um, I have the experience at this point. That's a skill. I am able to create PDF files from Word so I can, my office knowledge is on a 60%. My office knowledge is on a 60%, I will say. Okay. Uh, what else? My typing skills. That's a lack. You know, I don't have the typing skills that I wish I had. So the skills that I would like to hone, uh, in my case, is typing. 
I wish I could just type without looking at the keyboard, you know, just like Jim Carrey on that movie. Do you remember? All, uh, Almighty, Almighty, right? Without looking at the keyboard, just and then drinking coffee and typing with one hand and continue. Wow. Okay. What training options do I have if I want to type without looking at the keyboard? That's that's a tough one. That's a tough one. The only thing that I think of right now that comes to my head is um, a typing program on the internet. I have seen some typing tests. When I was at another academy, uh, I used to interview the students uh, of advanced. And one of the tests that we used to conduct before sending them to apply to a job position was the typing test. How many words you can type by minute, per minute. That's crazy. It's, and that's the name of the website. It's typingtest.com. If you want to try it, that's a good website, typingtest.com. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing that I would like to hone is uh, my office knowledge. I would like to know more about office, Excel formulas, um, word, word uh, tasks, you know, shortcuts, word shortcuts, how to use word properly, more efficiently. And that's basically it. That's what I wish I could learn or improve. Now, how will this um, improve my performance after after the training? How will my, my performance be increased? I can tell you, um, I will be more productive. I have seen that, you know, when I do things differently than I'm accustomed to, things get better, that's for sure. And will this benefit the organization? Definitely. But sometimes, you know, things happen. Let me give you an example. When I improved my performance last year, around this date on September last year, 2022, I was reaching the goal on my department on 110, 120%. So I was on top of everybody else. I was on the top, you know, hitting the numbers, getting the bonus. Guess what happened? They changed the goal. So we had a goal of six cases, let's say, let's name it. I My goal was six per hour, six per hour, six operations by hour. But one day they said, you know what? We're changing the goal now is nine, nine um, operations per hour. I was like, really? Okay. I didn't, I didn't make it. I mean, nobody made it. Nobody was making it, achieving the goals. That affected the company, of course. But they didn't change the numbers. So we had no other way, no other option than strive to achieve uh, the right numbers. So we did. And now, now every day I'm achieving the goal. I'm not on 110, 120. I'm just on 100. Is that affecting the organization? Uh, yes, it's benefiting the organization. I'm achieving my goals and that's it. It's more production, of course. It is more production. So, yes, anything that you do, whatever training you take, it improves your performance at work. Questions? Mm. This is not a for that. Okay, just let me clarify that. Look at each field of the chart. And basically what you have to do is follow the chart on a counterclockwise counterclockwise uh, sense. So this one goes first, then this one goes next, uh, then you have this one, okay? And then you have this one. Make sense? So one, two, three, and four. Make sense? Stop drawing, okay. So your task right now is to follow these instructions on page 20. 
design that instrument, okay? You can come up with a questionnaire, a chart, or questions to guide a needs assessment analysis session to identify the specific training personnel needs in your department. And this is, these are just examples of questions. Now, how are you going to do that? I will recommend you to do it on your own. Identify this on your specific job position. And let me check something quickly. We are 11 already, great. Ivan is here, Fatima is here, good. Who else is here? I think that's it. Yeah, everybody else was here, good. So, um, questions, what are we doing? No, everything is clear, okay, perfect. <clears throat> Let me just take a look at something really quick. Now, the needs assessment has a final point, which is the report, the results. That is pure gold for the company. Because if you constantly ask your employees, how are you doing your job? Remember that I told you about the uh, positions, the job description book, the jobs description book, how I had to describe each process, each employee performed on each position. So this is it. It's a questionnaire, you know, you go and ask the person, what do you do? How do you do it? How long does it take you to do it? And okay, what would you like to improve? If they don't know, you have to figure it out, right? He needs, I gave you the example of Miguel at the inventory with a computer and so on, right? What it's, what's needed after the service, all that data needs to be collected and you need to create a report specifying what you're found, what were your findings. And that's basically the needs assessment um, tool that we're going to create. Let me see. Oh, that's too complex. Um, so if you have no questions, we are 12 now. So I'm just going to make uh, three groups. I'm not going to make four groups. I'm going to make three groups, big groups, because not everybody's participating. So if you are alone, please ring my bell and I will go there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Go to your workbook so okay. you can work on this. Hey, I'm alone. Hmm? I'm alone in the in the I don't know. Lucy is alone. Uh, it's me alone. No, I sent you the invite. Okay. Va a aceptar la segunda invitación. Okay, not the first one. Just a minute. There you go.
Okay, let me go with the first group and I'll send you another invite if you don't. No le ha llegado la invitación. Fátima. Yes, but me redirigió otra vez aquí. Okay, just a minute. The, the page, the page, um, you need two page uh, 20. Ah, okay, and on the book, yes. yes, wait, 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 wait. Remember, uh, download. Ah, let me see. <laughs> I have a lot of documents on my computer. A la madre. <laughs> Lieutenant, do, do, do you uh, download, do you have the, the manual? I know. Okay, can you see my screen, Carla? Yes. Okay, okay. Teacher, first, uh, the first step for, um, is like uh, to choose a um, a uh, position. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, or okay. use yours. You can use yours. I mean, it's in, it should be individual in reality. You know, the uh, point is that the point is for you to feel like you are doing this needs assessment, identifying if you need anything. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
for example, in the in the company, teacher, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there are in the in the project there are many positions that are, um, for example, is um, in personal clave. No sé a cómo key, se diría. A key person, key. Mm -hmm. Key per person. Mm -hmm. Key person. Uh, Personal no clave. <laughs> non, non key people, non key personal, I'm sorry, non, non key person. Non key personal. Uh, uh, technician. Okay. Uh, wait, for, but for the. Uh, hold. hold how do you say uh, personal clave? Key person. Yeah. Key person. Uh, the minister uh, uh, give a lot, um, a lot, uh, a lot uh, experience in. in eh, los requisitos como requirements the requirement is a, is a list of many requirements for example in my case is the eh, one one engineer in engineer or architect with experience in administrator or mm -hmm. with my ma with master in administrator but or that's 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 the job description the the job requirements the job requirements mm -hmm. right okay now at this point you're you're evaluating how this person is doing his or her job mm -hmm. if, do they need um anything you know do they, is there a need to be addressed mm -hmm. Exactly. For what job? What job we choose? Any job. <clears throat> I think we need a little bit more um, explanation, right? It's not, it's too empty. In my case, I'm, I'm thinking of my, my... Don't worry, my Let, let's, let's take a break from this so I can explain you a little better, maybe. Let's go back.
<laughs> this is not a beer. I swear. It is it's not a beer. Uh, 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 no, no, no. It's not in the tight job. Oh come on. It's not it's not a beer. <laughs> it's is horchata de coco. Uh, they they just made oh, okay. they just made it and just brought it to me. You know what happened today? Horchata de coco con piquete. With nah, piquete. no, no, it's just horchata de coco. I went to El Seguro, right? I went to El Seguro again for the anesthesiologist. He evaluated me. When I finished the, the, the consultation, I went outside the, the El Seguro. And there was this lady outside selling pitahayas. Dragon fruit? Pitahaya. Man, a lot of pitahayas. Two dollars. Each pitahaya, two dollars. And I was like, what? Which, which one? The red one. The red one. Two dollars each. Two dollars a piece. I bought two because I only have five dollars. So I bought two. But man, it's just two dollars. And at the supermarket, they're like five, right? Have you seen the pitahayas at supermer supermercado, right? At the supermarket? They're like five dollars. One pitahaya. That's a lot. Esa of... Miguel de Cos is five dollars. Yeah, I just I just found them in two dollars each. Hmm. Okay, really quick. I'll go through the slides because I, I think <laughs> Okay. Okay, so I, I need I think we need better explanation of, of this topic somehow. Uh, let me prepare something really quick. Designing a needs assessment instrument is just identifying anything that you need in a position. So, for example, let's say that Hector works as an electrician. Hector has worked as an electrician for a long time, right? But at this point, after 10 years working as an electrician, I want to know, what are extra conditions on working? You know, how does it? How does he feel about working as a as an electrician? Does he know what he's doing? So, what is it? We have some stages that we need to follow. The first one is a pre-assessment. Then you have a real assessment. You come up with an action plan. And this is your needs assessment. Assessment is a synonym for um, attention, for action, okay? For a test. It needs to be tested again, okay? So again, the pre-assessment, how is Hector doing right now, okay? Um, let's see, let's test, let's conduct an assessment. How are we going to do it? What is the action plan that we're going to follow, okay? To make sure we attack these areas of improvement of Hector. Okay, after that, these are the needs assessment um, areas that we, we have to work on. Let's go deeper. on the pre-assessment stage or phase on this phase of the pre-assessment what do we have data collection what do we know this is the foundation of gap analysis what is gap do you remember what was gap A blank, right? A, a blank space. Okay, what are the gaps on Hector's knowledge? What is the current state? Well, Hector has worked for 10 years 
in the company as a, an electrician, so he knows a lot. Okay. Where should we be? Well, after 10 years, Hector shouldn't have to be a, just a technician. We have a hundred technicians, but only Hector has the experience. All of the other technicians have two years of experience and Hector has 10. What's going on here? Okay. Okay, and how does our region, these are just example questions, our region compared to others? Mm, in El Salvador, having a 10 years of experience technician is a lot. I mean, it's very good. On a region in Central America, 10 years of experience as an electrician is a lot. What's new? Okay, Hector doesn't know how to use the computers. He doesn't know how to use, um, have you seen these videos where there is a, a device to the, determine where is a cable broken? Is a light, some sort of uh, scanner, and you go through the live line, you know, the, the line that conducts the electricity. You just put it there and it goes beep, 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 beep. Okay, the line is broken here. You got it? Yeah? Así es como identifican ahora un cable roto. Follow it. Okay. It's broken here. For example, technology, right? What's important to get along with technology, to learn how to use technology nowadays? That's important for the company because the company wants to be more uh, ten technological develop technologically developed. Okay. The next stage, well, these are the, the phases, right? So we have free assessment. Let's look at the assessment stage. Now we know where we are standing. The next stage is the assessment itself. So we evaluate the data. What are our barriers? Internal and external, what are our barriers? Well, internally, um, not all of our employees are trained. Externally, everybody else is using technology, so that's a problem. We are not competent. We cannot compete, okay, with other companies because we don't have the, technolo the technology. Uh, these are the needs that we have identified. We need technology in our company. Are some gaps bigger than others? Yes. Um, consider scope and severity. So are, are some gaps bigger than others? Of course. Inside the company, we have a lot of employees that know the basics of electricity. They know how to repair um, high voltage lines. They know how to do it. Severity, um, well, the, the employees that don't know how to use the new technology to identify if a cable is broken or something is bigger. You see what I mean? I mean, the 80% of our employees don't know how to use the new technologies. So that's severe. That is a severe problem. Just a minute, sorry. Okay, sorry. Next, what are our priorities? Again, we have to bring technology to the company. We cannot wait anymore. It's 2023. Do we have the resources to address them? Yes, the company is in good standing. We have money. Let's invest on bringing technology to this electricity company. Why do anything at all? 
Why do we have to do anything at all to compete? If we don't go into the technological market right now, the other companies will gain more market and we will be out of out of the market completely. Remember the example that I gave you about the women underwear, how many companies are going out of business in El Salvador because they were not prepared for the Chinese, the Chinese uh, merchandise, do you remember? Yes, we have, we do remember. Okay, haha, let's go. So that, that's important if you're not prepared you're going out of business. Then, action plan. How are we, are we going to translate what we have into what they need? Which needs can we address? Our employees' needs. Our employees' needs. Uh, technology, technology knowledge. How are we overcoming barriers? Um, hindering progress. Uh, what we are what is stopping us, what is stopping us from becoming more technologically wise in the company is the employees, as simple as that. Our employees, many of them are old, but they have knowledge, okay? Um, so we just have to overcome that barrier. Have any areas been identified for follow-up or future opportunities of, for education intervention? Yes. Uh, again, many employees need to learn how to use the new technology. And I'm about to come up with a conclusion. Once we have identified all of these areas, the next stage is to gather all the data gather the data and search for objective measures. In a scope, how many or what percent, as I said, 80% of patients, in this case, <laughs> employees, okay, are exposed, vulnerable, expected to suffer from, this is just an example, okay? This has to do with medicine. Wait a minute, I went out of the topic for a minute. Okay, so that's the end of the example of electricians, okay? We identify what we need. Well, I'm sorry, we identified what we have. We identified why we need to do this. And finally, we identified what we are going to do. What's the plan? We are training everybody. What I will do is take Hector, because he has 10 years of experience, and trained or make sure, listen, make sure that the scope, nobody has asked what is a scope, by the way. The scope of support, the scope. Erika's here, no, I don't know. Okay, scope is what you know. Imagine that you are in a circle. Everything inside this circle is your knowledge. That's your scope. If a customer, a client, or if you're doing something and you don't know how to do it, that is out of your scope of support. Okay? For example, my car. My scope of support for my car, I know how to, I know how to change the oil, the spark plugs. I know how to change the tires, how to repair uh, a lot of things. But when it comes to electricity, I'm clueless. I'm clueless when it comes to the wiring, the wiring of the of the car. Man, that, that's complex. That is more complex knowledge, okay? So that's scope. I hope you got it. Now, the last part. So gathering the data. Um, gathering the data on these steps 
It's not what you know, it's how you know it. How much you really know about what you know. <laughs> so the gaps are identified in four ways. Normative, relative, expressed, and perceived. Normative is what is on the book on your company. For example, it says Adriana's functions are this, this, and that. Well, it doesn't say Adriana, right? Let's give an example. The receptionist is supposed to do this, this, and that. These are the normative uh, needs of that position. Relative. Okay, she needs to be bilingual. A receptionist needs to be bilingual, okay? But it's not so necessary. Expressed. The employee tells you, I need this knowledge. And perceived is just assumptions. Assumptions that you think this person has. Make sense? No? What people think their needs are or feel their needs to be, that, that's perceived. A receptionist may feel that she or he needs um, more phones, more lines in their job. A receptionist <laughs> may perceive that she or he needs the latest laptop in the world, an iPad. That's a perception of the employee, right? You got it? Okay. And what's the difference then, teacher, between expressed and perceived? Expressed is when you have the experience in the job and you know for a fact that you will need X thing, you know, like more lines, a better laptop. You know for a fact that you will need Excel in your computer because you have worked as a receptionist. So I need Excel. I need to organize my information. So I need Excel at least. That's expressed. Perceived, um, again, the latest laptop, you know, a gaming laptop. Oh my God, okay. Questions? No. Oh my God. Sorry guys, my baby is bringing me pita I, I just, I just tried the pita for the first time in my life. It's nice. Okay. What's pita you don't know what's pita haya? Oh, it's, it's just that you're a green guy, right? I forgot. I'm sorry. Dragon fruit. In America, we call it dragon fruit. <laughs> There's white or purple. But it's, it's very nutritious. It's very healthy. I heard. They, they give it to people with anemia. So that's really good. Okay. Señor, yo necesito saber si ustedes han entendido lo que estamos haciendo porque es no por gusto. Eh. I'm lost. Church. Oh my gosh, this last topic, I, I didn't get it. No, no. I, what? Cheers. This last slide, the, the last topic. Oh, the last oh, slide? Uh -huh. perceive, uh, That's the easiest one. Yeah. Repeat after me. I was not paying attention. No, I'm just kidding. Wait. Okay. <laughs> I like I like to watch the you're not laughing. Okay. Look. So where, where are you? Oh my god. Where are you now? Wait to show video panel. Okay needs we identified the needs or the gaps and that's that's the whole word what is a gap is an empty space so imagine that you have your on your brain empty spaces that you need to fill out there are four kinds of needs in your position going back to a week ago when i explained you that i I created a book of positions 
with the description of the job, each position. So normative will be the book. The book is the normative thing. Um, a person in charge of the inventory, that's a position. He needs a computer, he needs math knowledge, he needs uh, logical, you know, what, what Daniel called yesterday, sense, common sense. He needs common sense, logical processes, etc. right? All the steps. That's normative. It's written in a book. Like a manual? The what? Manual. It's a manual, exactly. That's the position manual. Positions manual. Okay. Relative, a relative need. Okay, the man in charge of the inventory may need, for example, if it is tires, he may need a pie de rey. You know what is a pie de rey? I don't know how to call it in English. I always forget that word in English. You don't know what is a pie de rey? No, it, it's it, it's something like this. It has the shape of a hand like this, and then you, you can take measurements in millimeters, millimeters and centimeters and inches. Centimetros, pulgadas, y millimetros. I know. I, yeah, I, I don't know how, I never liked that device. I, I studied engineering and, I, and they taught me how to use it at the university. I, I still don't know. And they explain me again and I forget. I don't like it. Anyways, so he may need, that's relative, you know, because he can use, he can use a, what, how do you say cinta de medida? Oh my God, teacher. A scale, uh, oh my God. I don't know how to say that, right? Cinta métrica, oh my God. New word for me. And I use it all the time. <laughs> Okay, but you got the point, right? That's relative. He can use other tools that he has. Now, expressed. Expressed. Is the person telling you, listen, Erica, um, I need this tool. I, I have 10 years of experience in this position, and I have never worked without this tool. I need it. Do you want me to be efficient? Do you want me to be uh, the best performing these tasks? Get me the tool. That's expressed. Okay, Makes teacher, the, the, the person, uh, the person, the, the, the list of acceptance, they have, they have experience in the area. Yes? Right. Exactly. <laughs> In the in the ways they express it. That's literally, literalmente. That's literally what I'm saying. He expresses you. I need this. I know I need this. Okay. Depending mostly the, the the person there. Yeah. Uh, and analyze analyzing. Depending on the knowledge of the person, you got it, Ivan. That's right. And lastly, perceived. The person has some knowledge, some experience on the job, and he thinks he needs that to conduct the job. Okay. Erica, cheers. Hey, okay. Okay. Questions? Please. I didn't get the 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 last one. Perceive. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Yo tengo un Android y siento que necesito un iPhone. <laughs> oh, okay. It's clear. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I didn't get it. Well, Express and perceive, Rel Rel relative. Relative. Yeah. relative, it's optional. It's something that you, in reality, you don't need it. 
to finish your job, to do your job, you may have it, but you can do your job without something else. Let me give you an example. You're, did you did you get to know the contometro, Erika? Did you get to know the contometro? Yeah? So you can do the task on a contometro with Excel, right? So why will you need a contometro? I mean, makes sense. Yeah. What, Ivan? It's a big difference. Yeah, but who who uses that? We don't use that anymore, <laughs> right? Okay, okay, teacher. I understood them. Understood them. The perceive is like a expectation. Mm -hmm. Expectation. The the position or the function. That's right. Like that. Right. That's right. It's like, I think I need this, you know. But if you don't have the money, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Okay. We can actually work on the needs assessment based on these four stages. Just formulate the questions on your book in your group and come up with your conclusions. So... Um, my position is this. This is what um what the book states that I should do. Okay. Um, I relatively need this, this, and that, but I really need this, this, and that. Okay. And I I, I went lost. I'm sorry. Relative and perceived are very similar, right? No, because, no, 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 wait. Relative is some things that could be improved. That has to do. Things that you could have, but it are not so needed. And perceived is just something that you as an employee go like, yeah, I, I think I will need this. Okay. Questions? A ver, super rápido. En breve, lo que se necesita es identificar a través de esta herramienta, que sea una herramienta, eh, eh, lo que lógicamente harías pensando, observando una posición de trabajo, cómo está esa persona, según las normativas de su posición de trabajo, qué es lo que hace. Eh, cómo podría estar, de forma relativa a la segunda parte, cómo podría estar si tú quisieras mejorar esa, las condiciones laborales de esa persona en su trabajo, en su posición. ¿Qué cosas necesita en realidad según la experiencia de esta persona, tiene experiencia, ok ¿Qué cosas sí cree necesitar para hacer mejor su trabajo y por último, ¿qué cosas de lo que te ha dicho es percepción propia que en realidad no necesita el trabajo es como la recepcionista que te diga que necesito un Ferrari ¿no? para realizar su trabajo ¿qué? ¿right? si ¿Sí ya vieron Betty la Fea saben de qué les hablo Okay, uh, yeah, Adriana, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, hope you got it. Let's go back. But please work with your classmates, okay? Teacher, I have a question. <laughs> no, okay, uh... let's go. Yes, Adriana, go ahead. <laughs> uh, we have to use the chart or just the, oh, okay. Just the, the questions. Chart. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, just okay. a question. If you want to use the chart, feel free. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let's do it. It's raining cats and dogs. Oh my God, someone left and came back. Okay, let's do it again.
sorry guys, I was closing the door on my back there. I was getting wet. Come on, Erika, Lucy, Vanessa, join your groups. Let's go, let's go. La ropa, teacher. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I, I was getting wet. I'm on the behind the backyard. Okay, let's go. Oh my god. Why are, why are you alone? Wait a minute. <laughs> Fatima, me, and oh, Nelson. It's just that many got disconnected. You know what? This is not going to work because everybody's having problem, having trouble with the internet. Let's go back. Let's go back. We're only missing 20 minutes. Hold on. Oh my God, I just tasted the most wonderful flavor of my life. It's a lemonade with pita haya. They're, they're experimenting on the on the kitchen right now. They're doing um, jelly. In my name. No, pita haya. They're doing uh, jelly, jelly with pita haya. Okay, and they're doing lemonade with pita haya. But that thing is like purple. It's not red. Eh, los traje de regreso porque todo el mundo está teniendo problemas de internet. So, y esto es algo más que todo individual. Lo puedes hacer con tu, tu, tu posición de trabajo. ¿Les parece? Entonces, estamos acá. Si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, me la hacen en el chat, acá en el Zoom. Let's work individually on your job position, okay? I think we can do that. Carla has a a lot to say. I know, Carla, that your, your experience on your job, I mean, but can you still improve your job? Do you need anything in your job? Yes, of course. <laughs> I need a Ferrari. <laughs> okay, let's go. If you have questions. I next... need more money. Money, of course, money, money, money. <laughs> Incentives. Tell, tell your boss, hey, I need incentives. No, because incentives can be one day free, one day off. <laughs> I, need, I need monetary incentives, you know. Oh, I want <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let me know if you have questions. I'll be here.
Okay, I think it's time. Sorry, guys. Está lloviendo bien fuerte acá. Me he tenido que parar varias veces para cerrar la puerta, la ventana, o se viene el viento bien fuerte. Anyways, so. Ajá, Adriana. Ok. <laughs> um, I just have to talk or I share yeah. my... Oh, okay, okay. So, tasks <laughs> you are expected to perform in your position. Okay, my position is... I, I don't know how is the specific name, so mm -hmm. I I put the name like... I write, wrote the name like Syrian... a specialist mm -hmm. okay and about the first point i uh, the the task are import databases tailor the c or let me think crm in english crm crm okay i think that's english already <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is it's in English. Okay. <laughs> it, so, tailor the CRM a system to align with the company's specific requirements and segment the database with list and impl implement automations for the process for, for example, like email marketing and and things like that and this is the first point and the second point is list all the current skill you have to allow to uh, allow you to perform the task that your position demands so the about this point we have data analysis technical attitude collaboration customer journey mapping because we have to map on Miro, <laughs> a different process about our client. Uh, for example, the sales process of each uh, client and mm -hmm. also organization. And that's with, with the second point. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, about the, the third one, list, list the skills you like to hone. So out of what you mentioned, what would you like to improve? Okay. Um, with this, uh, good practices of cleaning of data cleaning. Uh, what I mean with this is um how to try to to have um a clean a uh, database because if we have a lot of contacts in our database that they maybe they don't want to. To, to have communication uh, with with the company. Mm -hmm. That is like, how do you say, like, um, datos basura? Garbage data? Garbage. Okay. Or trash data, trash data. Trash. Sounds better. Okay, 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 trash data. Actually, junk data. Junk. J U N K, yeah, junk data. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So this is like the first point, mm -hmm. and also prepare reports with the information that we have on the survey. Mm -hmm. This is very important <laughs> because if you, the, this is the most important part to have a survey because. Uh, uh, you have to make decisions based in in on the data on data yes mm -hmm. and okay so, we're gonna so, leave it here <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay i'm sorry i'm sorry okay so let's do something tomorrow we will continue with this topic sorry we will continue with this topic and um because it's very as you can see it's very important it's very uh entertaining so um tonight i need to stay with vanessa if you're here, Vanessa, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. Just 10 minutes, okay? Don't worry. Let me do the attendance, guys. It's really late already. Yeah, there's a huge storm in San Miguel and San Salvador. Okay. 
Okay, be careful, guys. Adriana, Jose, Serna, Durán. Present. Thank you. Good night. Daniel Antonio Luna, Erika, Jasmine, Martinez Carpio. Present. Thank you. Fátima Denise, Aguilar Marquez. Present. Thank you. Good night. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. He left. Ivan Petrovic Guzmán Aquino. Present. Thank you. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Jolman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Carla left as well. The rain maybe. Lucy Nathalie Juárez de Ramírez. Right here. Thank you. Nelson Antonio Rodas Rosales. Present. Night, sir. Get better. Ruth Isela hey. Joaquín Flores. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. And Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm staying just with Vanessa. Thank you. Okay, Vanessa, buenas noches. Eh, esa es nuestra primera sesión uno a uno. Es la primera vez que estoy con ustedes. Y si se ha fijado en alguno de los videos anteriores, pues lo que yo hago en esta primera sesión. Hola, Vanessa. Hi. Yes. Si me escucha, no sé si tiene problemas de conexión. Sí, sí, me Un poquito. Ok, ok. Gracias, gracias por la cámara. Eh, bueno, eh, lo primero que... Es, son tres preguntas las que yo usualmente ocupo para estas primeras sesiones y es la primera ¿cuál ha sido su experiencia con, con el idioma inglés? o sea, esto de venirlo aprendiendo ¿desde cuándo lo viene aprendiendo? Eh, sin mencionar nombres de academias, claro ¿verdad? pero ¿qué ha sido su experiencia? En, en base a esa pregunta la segunda pregunta es si ha logrado identificar sus áreas de oportunidad, qué es lo que le cuesta, es decir, cuál es su talón de Aquiles, ¿no? Hablarlo, la gramática, eh, entenderlo, escribirlo, cuál será el problema eh, principal, ¿no? Que usted dice, esto es lo que más difícil se me hace. Y la última pregunta, ¿qué estoy haciendo? ¿Qué está haciendo usted? Aparte de recibir esas dos horas de clase, ¿hace alguna otra actividad para poder mejorar el aprendizaje? Solamente. Mm, en inglés, ¿va? Yes, claro. Bueno, bueno no, I... no, 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 perdón. Eh, sí, puede hablar en español, no se preocupe. Esto es un poco de data collection, como lo que estábamos viendo en la clase, ¿no? Mm, bueno, este, de haber empezado a estudiar inglés, o sea, desde el colegio, obviamente aún le dan la, le dan la materia, pero igual no, no era mi mejor materia, la verdad. Uh -huh. Nunca, nunca fue mi fuerte, varias veces la dejaba en el colegio. Luego, cuando ya estaba en la universidad, me metí a estudiar inglés y ya como que la agarré. ¿no? Entonces, siento que aprendí bastante, pero en eso empecé a trabajar y lo dejé, lo dejé otra vez. Estudié quizás como un año y medio. Entonces, este, llegué igual sin intermedio y me salí por lo del trabajo y bueno hasta el año pasado que empecé estas clases los las noches ¿no? uh -huh. entonces igual empecé también en, en el nivel intermedio y quiero ver este igual yo por lo menos yo siento que me hace falta bastante eh, lo de la la fluidez pero siento que Sí, es que mucho me trabo y, y a veces como que hay una palabra de que uno no se acuerda, entonces ya todo lo que quiso decir ya se lo olvidó y, y uno se pone nervioso, entonces siento que eso es lo que, lo que me hace falta porque, este, bueno, al menos mi trabajo ahorita por hoy, o sea, hoy por hoy no lo, no lo ocupo tanto, entonces uh -huh. como que no, que no practico mucho así en sí va. Uh -huh. Pero sí, o sea, yo trato la manera este, de ver eh, cómo durante el día, cómo lo, cómo lo, 
practica. Lo escucho, como lo practico, entonces, este, bueno, actualmente estoy viendo una serie en inglés para hacer el, el grammar, escuchar, el listening. A veces que no entiendo algo, lo busco, qué significa. ¿Qué serie es? Perdón. The Office. The Office. <ríe> Dicen que es buena, yo no, no, no la he visto mucho, he visto un par de episodios. Creo que es chistosa. A mí me da bien chistosa y me da mucha risa ahí. Siento que sí la entiendo, ¿ves? si hay cosas que a veces dicen ni, ni idea. Entonces, lo que hago es que lo pongo en español para, para entender que dijeron idea en inglés. Entonces, pero ahí voy, va. Pero a veces uh -huh. es bien difícil por el día a día que tiene uno, este, como, o sea, practicarlo así bien, bien en sí o poner atención totalmente, la verdad. O sea, es bien difícil. Bueno. A ver, pero una serie eh, en inglés y con subtítulos en inglés es lo más recomendable. El cerebro es increíble, percibe lo que sea. Y la comedia es una cosa que nos encanta, ¿no? Entonces, mm. ahora, dentro de la comedia se da mucho esto de... Y quizás nadie... Bueno, casi nadie habla de esto, pero en series de comedia o en películas de comedia se da la... Ay, ¿cómo se llama esta cosa? Biomecánica. Si se fijan los personajes, usualmente ocupan expresiones faciales o las manos para expresar algo. Aunque estén hablando, mm. o sea, se, se expresan con las manos. Es bien irónico y el cerebro percibe eso. Mm. ¿Ya? Y acuérdese, bueno, si usted se va para otro país donde solo se habla inglés y nadie habla español, pues la gente con señas uh, se da a entender. Se llama el lenguaje universal, dice Pablo Coelho. Eso es lo que, lo que Pablo Coelho define como un lenguaje universal, porque al final buscamos la manera de comunicarnos. Ajá. Entonces, sí funciona, pero véanlas con sus títulos en inglés, esa es mi recomendación. Eh, ahí les he enviado un par de herramientas en el WhatsApp también. Eh, algo que yo les estoy sugiriendo a todos, sin, sin excepción, y es, pues solo uno lo ha agarrado ahorita de este grupo, y así es siempre en todos los grupos, es que si desean practicar, lo que pueden hacer es apoyarse en un teacher, ¿no? En mi caso, ¿no? Si se quieren apoyar en mí, me pueden enviar un audio allá al tiempo, no sé, un, o al día, no me importa, pero no más de 30 segundos, contestando cualquier pregunta abierta, como primero decir la pregunta, ¿no? Decir, what's um, your favorite Salvadorian food? No sé. Y contestar uh -huh. la pregunta en 30 segundos. Usted mencionaba algo, Vanessa, y es la, el hablarlo, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué no puedo? A usted casi no le he escuchado en la clase, honestamente, eh, pero hablar está basado en dos situaciones desde mi experiencia. Uno, vocabulario, y la dos quizás pesa más muchas veces, la timidez, la falta de confianza. Eh, puede ser que sea un problema... Eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Muy personal. Puede ser un problema muy personal y se mar maravillaría de lo increíble que resulta eh, cuando una persona agarra confianza. No está aprendiendo solo inglés, está aprendiendo a expresarse en un nuevo idioma, a hablarlo. Y eso ayuda mucho, agarrar confianza. Entonces, yo le, les invito mucho a mis alumnos a que se suelten, a que hagan el ridículo. Porque para poder tener confianza en sí mismo, primero hay que humillarse. Uh -huh. Eso no es fácil. Pero en la medida en la que lo haga, poco a poco, poco a poco, un día va a estar hablando pura gringa y ni cuenta se va a dar. <risa> sí, se puede. Entonces, ánimo y pues cuente conmigo para lo que necesite. Hable, escríbame ahí en el WhatsApp, ahí está, guarde mi número, si en el futuro... Eh, Dios quiere que le ayuden algo, pues escríbame. Si aún estoy vivo, pues con gusto. No, está bien. Ok, Vanessa. My pleasure. Hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.